Thank you. Can, can you hear me back in the back? Whoa. I'm, I'm going to try not to use the microphone if, it, if, if at all possible. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Whoa. Okay. Hey, uh, one, uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. It, it certainly is an honor to be here. When I got the call uh, to uh, ask if I, if I had the time to come out here, it was, it, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think what was on the calendar. I, I was coming. Okay, so uh, uh, it, this is really, truly an honor for me to be here. Uh, th thanks for choosing to serve. Thanks for choosing to serve uh, our nation and uh, our army. And uh, I, I truly mean it. This is a great profession. And congratulations on your selection as a General George Marshall <clears throat> Award recipient. It, uh, it says a lot about you. I had a platoon leader when I was in uh, Third Ranger Battalion tell me, uh, hey, Sar hey, hey, Sar hey, Sergeant Schroeder, uh, don't ever change your standards, okay? Don't ever change your standards. You may need to adjust your expectations. Uh, he, told, he told me that, and so that, that, to, help keep, to help keep you sane, you know, uh, never change your standard. Never change uh, what you're, how you conduct yourself, conducted yourself, or, or your work ethic what you did to get you to this point right now. Every, every, time I talk to, every time I talk to soldiers, new soldiers or soldiers that are getting ready to re-enlist, I tell, and, and family members too, uh, there's a couple great things about the Army. One, one of the greatest things about the Army is nobody wants to see you fail. Everybody wants you to be successful. And, and, we, and that's for the soldier, and their families. We want, we want you to be successful. And the other great thing is, it's not about what you're doing, it's about who you're doing it with. And so you could be performing some of the most miserable tasks or missions known to man, and they'll become some of your most fond memories as time goes by. Not because what you were doing, it's because who you were doing it with. And so what I'm telling you is, it's all about the people. It's all about your soldiers and their families. Treasure your, troop leading, treasure your troop leading assignments. They, are, they will be too short for you, and they will be too far in between. Treasure those troop leading procedures or uh, assignments. It's all about the people. You have to know your soldiers and, the, and, and their units and your unit. Okay? You need to know their capabilities and limitations. And I'll tell you, uh, we have some great soldiers, and there's a lot of talent in there, and you can't find the talent unless you spend time with them. I'm going to tell you, we, I just came back from, uh, I just got back from Afghanistan, just got back uh, last year in, in June, but uh, seems just like a moment ago, all right? Uh, we, had, we had a 25 uniform. Anybody know what a 25 uniform is? A communication specialist, okay? He was in a guard tower. He was in a guard tower with an Afghan security guard. And uh, it, it, doing stand to in the morning, uh, they, they heard a vehicle coming towards their position. Uh, the Afghan security guard knew what was going on, and he climbed down out of the tower and started to move away. The, uh, the PFC that was in the guard tower started engaging the, the vehicle that was coming towards his position. He engaged it until right before it made contact with the wall below his tower. And uh, it was a V-bed. It, it detonated him blew up his, his uh, squad automatic weapon, uh, tore his ears up, tore his face all up. He climbed down out of the tower. Right behind that V-bed was a van that had eight insurgents in it. They got out of the van firing RPGs and small uh, light, light machine guns trying to breach the compound. That uh, PFC 25 uniform climbed down out of the tower, picked up the Afghan sec security guards, AK-47, and killed five. He killed five until help got there and, and uh, repulsed the rest and, and defeated the attack. Okay, General, uh, General Townsend and I, he, during the last deployment, he was an assistant division commander for operations. Uh, and we'd go out and check on, we'd check on operations. And uh, on one, one occasion we went out to the Pesh Valley and we, we landed at a, a battalion tack. We were getting a update from the battalion commander and the sergeant major before we went in to check on the operation and a call came in on the radio and uh, if I remember correctly it was something like this 
three six or bulldog tactics this is three six Romeo were in contact with small arms and RPGs. The uh, platoon leader's wounded. The platoon sergeant's unconscious. The medic's dead. The RTO's wounded. The enemy's 30 meters from our position, and we need help right now. That young man stayed on the radio for about four and a half hours, and uh, he marked their location, called for fire control CCA, and called a nine-line medevac. And uh, he did that while the squad leaders were out fighting. Uh, that was a PFC. He was the medic. He was the, or I'm sorry, he was the RTO. PFC, RTO. He had been shot in the head, shot through the shoulder, and had a broken arm. And he, did, he, he stayed on the radio for four and a half hours. Uh, and there's a lot of talent out there that, that you don't know about. I, was, I went out into a tower and, and started talking, talking to a soldier. He had come in the Army, joined the Army when he was 41 years old. I'm standing, he's a 13 Bravo. I'm standing in the guard tower with him, 13 Bravo, and I'm talking to him because he was one of five that was identified to get a coin okay, on the, on the cop. So out of 140, he was one of five to get a coin. He'd been in the Army eight months. And uh, <clears throat> I asked him, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry. I said, why'd you wait so long to join the Army? He says, Sergeant Major, I had, I, had, I had some things going on in my life, and my, fam my kids moved out of the house, and so when the kids moved out of the house, I talked to my wife about it, and she told me, follow your dream. So I joined the Army, and I told him, I take any job you give me. I said, well, what were you doing before you joined the Army? Well, I was teaching school uh, in, in Missouri. I said, well, what were you teaching? Economics at a, at a small college in Missouri. Well, anybody from Texas? He went to a small school in Texas, Baylor University. He had a, he had a PhD in economics. And I got, back to the, uh, I got back to my office and checked out his ERB and pulled it up. Sure enough, I mean, all of his scores. Anybody know what a 146 GT score is? Okay. He had a 146. There were only three scores out of all of his line scores that were lower than 146, and all three of them were 145. Okay. I called the brigade sergeant major and said, Hey, Sergeant Major, if you don't get him out of a guard tower, okay, and get him on an economic development team or some kind of team to solve ANSF pay, you know, we, we can have him doing the wrong thing. And so you got to know what your people are capable of and use them, all right? Use them. We just had a, uh, we just did, on Fort Campbell last week, we just did a Distinguished Service Cross, uh, awarded a Distinguished Service Cross to a Sergeant Pereira. Sergeant Pereira came to the United States from Brazil in 2005. He learned English as a second language. Soon as he finished, you do the math, soon as he finished learning English as a second language, or maybe even partially simultaneously, he earned his bachelor's degree in biology from, I think it was Nebraska, okay? And, uh, and in 2009, he joined the Army. And we, we pinned a Distinguished Service Cross on him last week for his actions during our last deployment. I mean, that's, that's something, I can't, I don't, I couldn't earn a bachelor's degree in biology in my first language. Oh, <laughs> so uh, it's amazing. Hey, our equipment works, our equipment works. Trust it, but it only works if you use it. It only works if you use it. And so, talking about standards and discipline, <coughs> gunner restraints, seat belts, helmets, things like that. Here's how good it works. We had a uh, sergeant, I was talking to a sergeant that had gotten shot in his chest plate. He was telling me about it. He said, Sergeant Major, I came around the corner and uh, the, the, uh, they got the guy got the drop on me and his AK muzzle was in my face. So I grabbed his muzzle, I grabbed his muzzle and stuck it in my chest plate and started punching him. He got shot like three times in the chest plate. He's okay. Oh. And so, what I'm telling you is, you, we, we have some, the talent is deep, okay? And you're gonna go stand in front of these soldiers. You're gonna be charged with taking care of these soldiers and their families. And they're gonna be standing there and they're gonna be asking three questions of you. Is my leader committed? Can I trust my leader? And does my leader care about me? And all, those th all three of those questions cannot be answered with words they have to be answered with action. Don't underestimate the, don't, don't underestimate the impact uh, your presence or your time will have on soldiers. You have to spend time with them. You have to talk to them.
Uh, don't underestimate that. It's uh, you know, I was uh, I was at Fort Carson a couple weeks ago. We have a brigade. We had two brigades out there training. I was just going through the dining facility. Sat down and started uh, talking talking to some of them. We were sitting there. Uh, just eating breakfast, and I probably sat there and talked to him for probably 30, 40 minutes, about five, five or six of them. As I got up and started walking away, uh, I heard one of them say, and they didn't, they didn't mean for me to hear it, said, wow, <clears throat> I've seen Sergeant Majors walk through before, but I never had one sit down and talk to me. Uh, so don't underestimate, don't underestimate what, uh, what impact you have. And uh, just going to inspect something throughout your career, you know, we, uh, anybody, We've had people in uh, Afghanistan that's, that's in this uh, RC East down in Chark. Anybody been to Chark? Well, I went out to Cop Chark and uh, I was talking to the first sergeant asking where his OP was. It was up on this big mountain that was several kilometers away. <clears throat> I told him, I asked, there was 10 soldiers up there. They stayed up there for eight days at a time. I, was, I asked him, when's the last time you've been up there? And he, he gave me the question mark look in my eye. I said, okay. We're going to go up there. And so I came back and we went up there and spent the night up there. And right before I came in, right before I came in, they had just delivered 4,000 pounds uh, worth of supplies to them. Class four, uh, pop and heat meals, uh, you know, fuel. And the only thing they asked, they said, hey, this is all great. The only thing they asked for more of was, hey, can we get another pickaxe? Okay. But your presence puts emphasis, your presence as a leader puts emphasis on what your soldiers and your troops will be doing. Use your NCOs, all right? Use your first sergeants, use your command sergeant majors, all right? Go seek them out. Talk to them. Don't, the good ones will appreciate you coming to them, okay? Seek them out and talk to them. The good ones will really appreciate it. As a lieutenant, you, you do not under, you can't imagine uh, how great your impact is on shaping the senior NCO Corps of the future. The reports you will write for your platoon sergeants will decide who's going to be a first sergeant and who's not going to be a first sergeant uh, of the future. As a ca captain or a company commander, you're going to determine who becomes a sergeant major or a command sergeant major, or they don't get promoted. Your, so your, your impact is great. You got to counsel them, help develop them, and make them grow. Uh, and then we have to hold them accountable. Be with your unit. Be with your unit, okay? Hang out with your, your lieutenant friends, all right? Hang out with your buddies on Friday night and Saturday. But other than that, be with your unit. This will set the tone for everything, everything your, your unit becomes. You will set the climate. Uh, we're talking about EIB, EFMB, learn with your soldiers. PT with your soldiers. Even if, even if your fitness level is much greater than theirs, okay, PT with your soldiers. Seek jobs that provide experience, the hard jobs. Uh, co company XO. Okay, S3, S4, okay? These jobs will teach you how the Army operates and runs. They're critical. These jobs are critical. So find the hard ones. All right, you have to be physically fit and mentally tough. You've got to persevere. Be physically fit enough to withstand deprivation and still lead your soldiers from the front in any task because the mountain doesn't care. You have to be mentally tough enough to deal flexibly with change and remain relatively unaffected by chaos. Always lead by example. If it's dirty, make sure, you, if it's hard and dirty, make sure you're there. If it's risky or dangerous, make sure you go first. You gotta be dependable and enforce standards and build a reputation of getting the job done. Be responsible and accountability for your own decisions, those of your soldiers, Account for your equipment and don't walk past, by, past mistakes. Always issue orders in your own name. Keep your soldiers informed. Be fair and, and approachable with your soldiers. 
Leadership matters, and we're counting on you to uh, provide it.